Well, hello. Welcome to our time of daily prayer. My name is Rich Schmidt, pastor of Living Hope in Valparaiso. Uh, let's begin with this brief prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, this morning, we're going to take a look at two brief scenes from Mark's gospel in chapter 6. Uh, the first one starts in verse 1. It says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these, t get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Have you heard the saying, familiarity breeds contempt? It means that as we become more familiar with something or someone, we tend to treasure it less. It becomes more ordinary. In fact, sometimes we get to where uh, we can't see any of the positives and can only see the negatives about that thing or that person. That's when contempt starts to show up. That's when we get offended like Jesus' hometown neighbors did. Oh, you're a big shot, huh? You think you're something special? You Jesus, you're ordinary, just like us. We, we know your family. We went to school with you. You're nothing special. They, they couldn't get past just how ordinary Jesus was, and so they missed out on all that he wanted to do for them and blessings that could have been theirs. Now, I don't want to repeat that mistake. <laughs> do you? <laughs> if God wants to send me a miracle, a moment with him, wrapped in a very ordinary package, I want to be open to receiving it and experiencing whatever it is he wants to give me. I want to have my antenna tuned to hear the voice of God in the ordinary moments of life. Uh, in an ordinary passage of scripture that I've read a dozen times before, I want to be open to what God wants to say to me. In an ordinary conversation, an ordinary encounter with someone, I want to be open to God speaking to me through that person. Man, open to God speaking to them through me. What lesson might God want me to learn? What encouragement might he want to give? What peace, what joy, what healing, what confidence, what hope? Please, uh, don't miss what God wants to say to you or do for you today. All right, the, the other scene starts in verse 6, the next verse. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Once again, we see God works through ordinary people like you and me. I mean, these 12 disciples were ordinary folks. I can just imagine as Jesus starts to send them on this mission that Peter stands up, since he's usually the one that does this, uh, and objects. You know, Jesus, we're not rabbis or prophets like you. We're just ordinary folks. We're not miracle workers. I mean, there's a tax collector over there and you know, Simon's a zealot. He wanted to start an insurrection. You know, the four of us, we're fishermen. Are you sure? And yes, Jesus is sure. <laughs> That's exactly who Jesus works through. Ordinary people. People with a checkered past who can testify to God's mercy and forgiveness. Uh, people with flaws that God is still fixing, healing, and undoing the damage from. People with questions who nevertheless keep looking to Jesus and letting him lead. God works through ordinary people like me and like you. It's like he deputizes 
his disciples. He, he deputizes us. He gives us his authority. He empowers us with a, a power that doesn't come from us so we can do the work that he has called and authorized us to do. If you've been thinking that God only works through super spiritual people or religious professionals or something like that, let God give you a new mental picture. Let God renew your mind and help you picture yourself as loved by God, forgiven by God, called by God into a life where his spirit guides you and empowers you to make what could be a massive difference in the lives of the people around you and around the world, one seemingly ordinary moment at a time. Please, don't miss what God wants to do through you. Okay, that's what God was highlighting for me in this section of Scripture. If he was highlighting something different for you, please share it in the comments or in the chat so we can all learn and grow together. Now, let's pray. God, please help us not to miss anything you might want to say to us or do for us today, especially if you send it uh, in an ordinary-looking package. Uh, please give us eyes that are open to see you and the people we meet. Give us ears that are open to hear your voice. Give us hearts that are open to receive whatever good gift you want to send our way today. And God, please help us not to miss anything you might want to do through us for others. Thank you for inviting ordinary people like us to be a part of your great mission in the world. Help us to pay attention. Help us to say yes to the invitation of your Holy Spirit throughout the day so we don't miss any opportunity to be a part of your great work. Or, uh, as it says in this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, would you pray with me the prayer Jesus taught us? Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like us to pray one more prayer of thanks together. We prayed this yesterday. I'd like us to do it again. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you'd like to meet on Zoom this afternoon, Tuesday, January 25th, uh, I'll be hanging out at livinghope.info slash Zoom from 2 to 2.30. I'd be happy to chat with you, pray with you, whatever you need. Uh, just type livinghope.info slash zoom into your browser and it should open the app and take you right there. That's today and Thursday this week, uh, 2 to 2.30. Now, glory to God, who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and always. Amen.